Hello everyone and welcome to yet another backstage room with Kitabi Karwan and I am very excited for this particular uh, episode because we have with us Terry O'Brien he's come out with this he's edited this collection of short stories which he titled the best short stories and I'm very interested to talk to him about this because I personally am a huge fan of the format and for those of you who don't who don't know him he's a major connoisseur of literature and he's an academician who's turned a full-time writer and oh my god if you would delve into his history it is so amazing he's written and edited so many books of all sorts not just fiction but non fiction as well and we have him here with us today so i'll just uh, add him to the speaker board and we can get started right away hi kari yeah hello Good welcome evening. welcome to backstage and welcome to this conversation with kitabi karwan i'm siddharth nice to meet you finally e meet you in person but uh, i'm so excited for this interview yeah now siddharth yes uh, before i begin yes i'd like to share a little experience i had right with the british council a few years ago yes yes please tell okay. yeah and uh, there was this speaker who had come from uk and uh, he was being introduced to everybody uh, by those who were interacting with him okay. and the speaker is none other than the famous critic david dichus oh. and uh, you know we in india we have a little tongue slips and all that so somebody was calling him dichus somebody call him dekchi somebody call him what 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 so he smiled with no insult uh, to anybody he smiled and he said you are not righteous if you cannot pronounce david dichus <laughs> so i'd like to make a little amend to the introducer he said terry o'brien no it's terry o'brien oh. o'brien is an irish name my forefathers came from ireland i'm an anglo indian settled in india o apostrophe b means o son of brian it is like osama bin laden i'm sorry i got this parallel osama <laughs> bin means son of right. osama bin son of laden right. so that's the first thing i'd like to point out right. and the second of course is i am i i i privileged that you gave a very nice introduction of mine so now you can shoot <laughs> well terry first of all i must admit i was the introducer and i apologize for mispronouncing your name uh i it's a, it's actually the e that got me confused but thank you for correcting me and uh, i think i would rather talk a lot more about the process of getting about with uh how you edited this book but um the very first thing that i want to ask you the title of the book is the best short stories ever right and that's a pretty uh, hefty claim that has that's to be made to the extent that you've chosen 41 stories which you've edited and and they are actually a very eclectic mix which i am a huge fan of but what made you go down this route you know it's i mean as you read a lot and you have in fact edited hundreds of other books so what made you sure that you know you can pick out the best ones i mean i'm not questioning your credentials but you know it does require a uh, some i don't know some innate confidence about your own abilities and what inspired that there are two questions you asked i mean if i put it straight one you asked me about editing i've also written books okay right. this was actually selected and edited by right so the first part you asked me about editing and the second part you asked me about the selection am i right yes now who is a writer a writer writes and if you want to become a writer write right okay but 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 please listen out writing is very easy it's not difficult but editing your own writing or rewriting is what is very important good sentences can never be written 
they are always rewritten. I'll give you an example of Sir Winston Churchill. He was a fantastic orator. And he wanted to speak during the World War to the soldiers. So he took down four words. And he said, okay, now let me go and talk to them. So he said, what are they doing? So the four words were very simple. Sacrifice, perspiration, effort, and sorrow. Very nice words. Right. Now, as I said, he rewrote them. You see, when you write, you must remember that three syllables become two and two become one. You cannot write. You have to rewrite. Even you have to re-edit your writing. Editor, every writer is an editor. If he does not edit his work, he's writing trash. So what did Sir Winston Churchill do? He noticed that the first word was sacrifice. Sacrifice. There were three syllables. Okay. The second, perspiration. How many syllables? Four. Right. Yeah. And then effort. Effort is two. And sorrow is two. He rewrote it and he said, Britain wants, instead of sacrifice, your blood. Instead of perspiration, your sweat. In, instead of effort, your toil. And instead of sorrow, tears. That's how it became powerful. Mm -hmm. If you remember our own Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose, yes. when he gave his famous speech, he never said balidan do. He said khun do, khun. One sound. So what I'm trying to say is every writer has to be his own editor. <laughs> Editing, they think, means I get 10 stories. And I know, no, no. You have to be your own editor. You have to write and rewrite. And the, the secret of writing, there are very few rules of writing. Very few. The first, of course, is that when you write, you have to bleed. It's not writing, it is bleeding. I mean, you have to bleed, you have to create, you have to recreate. I'll tell you, Siddharth, very interestingly, yes. writing is a skill and an art. When a sculptor works, I'm sure you are aware, yes. he takes a mound of clay, a mound <laughs> of clay, makes a ball. And thereafter, he starts reducing piece by piece, and the image becomes beautiful. That is the skill of writing. That is the skill of editing. It's difficult. It's very difficult. And secondly, we have to realize that we have to make writing has to be very simple. It is very easy to write difficult sentences. What happens? You must have seen some of these so-called nowadays novelists where, or students when they go to an exam to write an essay. The first thing that comes to their mind is, I must impress my teacher. He or she must get impressed. He's used these words, just big words, Mr. Sashi Tharoor, with due apologies to him. He uses big words, but that is very easy. The most difficult thing is to use a straight, simple word. That is what makes Ruskin Bond the writer of the millennium. It's very simple, beautiful language. So what we must do, what I think, when you edit your own work, your own work, forget about others, you have to remember word count. Three syllables should become two, two should become one. Most of us suffer from Lagoria, I'm sure you, you're not aware of this difficult word I've used with difficulty. Lagoria means a diary of words. <laughs> we, we want to impress, yeah. but we forget we have to express because the reader is already impressed by himself. The listener is impressed. Don't try to impress on the others. So, it, you know, language has to be beautifully done. Very important. I'll give you an example 
of a novel. I'm, do, I'm sure you didn't read it. I did 2010. There was a beautiful movie made out of it. Love Story. Not the Hindi one, the English one. Hey. Love Story. Written by Eric Siegel. Right? When we saw the book, we bought it just for the opening lines. And look at the lines. What would you say of a 25-year-old girl that she died young? That she was brilliant, full stop. That she loved Mozart, full stop. And the Beatles, full stop. And me. Instantly it hit, hit us. That is the part of editing. Every writer has to be an editor. Besides giving it to the publisher for editing, you have to edit it. And then only your work of art like a sculptor. You reduce and reduce and a beautiful image is made. And secondly, I would like to tell you, I'll give you another example. In India, three things matter. A, B, C. I don't know if you'll agree or not. A stands for astrology. Every morning people open the newspapers to see how will the day go. So A is astrology. B is Bollywood. And C is cricket. And I'll give you an example from cricket. Okay. A spinner will take a wicket only he, if he varies the length. If you keep bowling at the same place, you can never take a wicket. Similarly, it is in writing. If I write a sentence, I'll tell you, the first sentence, my parents always loved me and took care of me. Full stop. My, pa my parents always loved me, me and took care of me. Ten words. The next sentence, they were concerned about me. Five. And now comes the, the variation. They loved me. It hits you. Right. You see, I tell you, for example, editing. For example, there are three kinds of sentences. I'm sorry, Siddharth, I'll, I'll get back to the other points later. I'm only talking the editing part. Of course. Uh, what happened is that when you write, there are three kinds of sentences. First is a loose sentence. A loose sentence does not mean a bad sentence or an incorrect sentence. It is the traditional subject, verb, object. My name is Terry O'Brien. That's a loose sentence. It's a correct sentence. Yeah. The second is a balanced sentence. Many speak, but Siddharth was the best. So many and few. Many tried. Few were successful. This is a balanced sentence. And then comes a periodic sentence where the structure changes, and that is what hits you. Terry O'Brien. Terry O'Brien is my name. Bond. James Bond is my name. Not I am James Bond. You see, right. that's how writing is. I, 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 I'm sorry I'm not being critical. There's a book written by a dear friend of ours. I am... I, why I am a Hindu? I am a Hindu. I don't know if you know who's written it. I do. Sir. Very, huh? I do. It I is. Do. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Yes. I would have loved the title to change. I why I, I I am a Hindu, right? I would have said, why am I a Hindu? A lot of people are scared to use the word I. Because they think it is ego. No, it is assertive training. If I'll be a little naughty, if you ask a girl in the office while you're on a two wheeler to drop her to the bus stand and you say, Would you like a lift? You know what the answer will be? No, thank you. But if you go up and say, I would like to give you a lift, she cannot say, No, thank you. So you see, writing, editing, these are all one part. It is not just taking the second part that you asked me is about these stories. Now, these stories have not been clubbed to very easy. I'll take to you can also take 41 stories into it. That's not the way it's done. There is a structure and there is language. Remember, writing is a verbal world. Right. right. It's not a virtual world, it's a verbal world. You have to write. In fact, I like, I like, uh, 
the title of your program. It is called, if I'm not mistaken, Kitabi Karma. Am I right? Yes, sir. Right. Can I tell you something? Yes, please. Murde padhe hai labzon ke band kitabo mein lasho ka hai ek shahar hai jo bolta nahi. Thik hai? So what I mean to say, the juice comes only not from the printed word, but what you do, what you can deliver. You see, what happens, people read a book. And this I've read, it is beautiful. Ask them, can they share a line which has impressed them? Can they share a thought? I'm afraid most people don't. Because my rule in life is the three R's. Read, record, recall. If you can't recall what you've read, it, it, it doesn't make sense. You know, today we have a plethora of young people who claim to be writers, authors, and they get one book published, one may be paid, and the other may be because of a soft corner for the writer. And they say, okay, this writer uh, is a young girl, she's very pretty. If pretty was the measurement for writing, W.H. Auden, the greatest poet, wouldn't have, wouldn't have been a writer. You know, his face was absolutely wrinkled. And one day in Oxford, when he was speaking, they asked him, uh, please describe yourself. He says, my face is like a wedding cake left for three nights in the cold month of December. <laughs> so it's not the look. It's not, it's not. Now comes the stories that I've collected. Now, these stories, if you read my uh, introduction, I have given the structure of the story. In fact, I would like to tell you what is the difference between a short story and a novel. A short story is a photograph. A novel is a film. So a short story, you have to carve on an inch of ivory. You, the landscape is not much. And time plays a very important factor. Time means not the length of the story. I'll give you the example of Rip Van Winkle. I'm sure you must have read it in school about Rip Van Winkle, who went up uh, to the Catskill Mountains yes. and some dwarves gave him something to drink. And he fell asleep for 20 years. When he woke up, he found his dog had gone. His gun had become rusty. He had a oh, long gray beard. He went down to the village and he found his little girl had become a mother and his grandchildren were playing. Now, this if this was a novel, then those 20 years that he slept would have been described. No, it is a short story. So short story means brevity. It has to have singleness of aim and singleness of effect. You don't take 41 stories and cut paste them. You have to understand the structure and you have to see the variations, the types of characters. You will have to see the plot and the story. There is a difference between plot and story. A story is life in time. Ek tharaja, ek thirani, dono khatam kaani. This is a story. A plot is life in values. Ek tha raja, ek thi rani. Wo rani se baut pyaar karte te, rani mar gai, aur dukh se wo mar gai. This is a plot. So when you look at short stories, you have to not just look, okay, Somerset mom has written it, so-and-so has written it. No. And there are people, you've got to understand what exactly is the structure. And secondly, you have to see that there are three elements in a short story. You have the plot, you have the character, and you have the intent. That is very important. I'll give you the shortest short story. If I would write, what would it be? I entered a railway compartment and there was only one person sitting there with an overcoat and a felt hat. I asked him, do you believe in ghosts? He said no, and he vanished. It means you have the beginning, you have the middle, and you have the end. Now, if you want, I'll continue telling you, but I, I'm sorry, Siddharth, I'm stealing your show. Please shoot <laughs> some questions. No, Terry, this is this is 
absolutely amazing because uh, very honestly i was just making some notes at the same time because this is such an informative answer um and it actually reminded me of a session uh, i had attended uh, years ago as a teenager uh, i'm a huge fan of lord jeffrey archer and he'd come down to india to la- uh, launch one of his books and he'd indulge in an exercise with the audience where he spoke about his writing style and he also comes from the same school of thought where he focuses on how editing the written word is the most critical part of you uh, know you know putting forward the story and the exercise he made us in, indulge in was coming up with a short story which wraps up in exactly 100 words right he said it can't be 99 it can't be 101 and that was a very, like i think my first ever experience with what you're actually talking about right now and it's so so important for uh, i think modern day writers and and when when i say writers i don't just mean uh your pro- people who write professionally you know authors but i mean students and anyone who basically all of us who engage with any sort of writing in life but uh, terry i'll just uh, come back to a question that i had in mind I'll come back to jeffrey archer for a moment okay. yes yes sorry okay. please with please all respect to him and others you know there was this writer from america who is sometimes called the shakespeare of american literature Herman Melville okay he wrote a fantastic novel on whaling industry called Moby Dick in fact the movie was made also yes into Moby Dick right and can you believe in his full lifetime only 25 copies sold a best seller is the gilded tomb of a mediocre writer <laughs> trust me i have read x i have read y what was the opening line i don't remember but you ask somebody who wrote it was the best of time the worst of times they'll say dickens a tale of two cities you see unless it registers unless you carry back something after reading it it's okay he's a successful writer x is a not a successful writer success is a different measurement what i'm trying to say is a book must make its impact it will make an impact in such a way that when siddhar sits over a cup of coffee with his roommate or his friend or his fiance he'll discuss the book and she's a what a boring man yaar yeah. is discussing but he cite those lines and she wow man well said well said so this is what is very important yes now shoot your question uh yeah th- you're absolutely right terry i think uh, and when you when you think about it right i think uh some of the most powerful lines or actually powerful would be an overstatement when i mean uh let's call them memorable lines that i've read in my life would come from literature or lines which are absolutely simple right like if you think about it one of the most popular modern day lines for millennials would be uh from the harry potter series where snape after tum- like the conversation Think between dumbledore back, and being back to harry potter now you brought me back to my theme in the short stories <laughs> it has magic realism the re- realism is a part of literature right. realism symbolism these are all parts of literature right what i'm trying to say i'm not trying to be little any author i mm. want to tell you one thing always when we talk of english literature we think of william shakespeare right, right. now william shakespeare no new no he knew no greek no latin he was a very ordinary chap okay now what he used to do he used to re- he used to read the translations of plutarch and holinshed by a man called sir thomas north okay and i'll give you an example how he is a genius i'll tell you how there is a scene in antony and cleopatra you know cleopatra was the most voluptuous woman ever in history an anti antony fell madly in love with her and then she decided to come to uh, on the barge come from egypt and enobabus is the eunuch who describes her beauty right. and there are people jumping into the river nile throwing flowers they gone berserk and sir thomas north writes she sat upon a golden barge did you get it she sat on a golden barge 
upon the waters. This was the translation. Right. You know what Shakespeare did? He only added one word. She sat on the golden barge that burnt upon the waters. That right. created Shakespeare. It is not Shakespeare. One word it creates. I'll tell right. you, the best book, I'm, I'm not talking of religion, best book right. ever written is the Bible. It is written in simple biblical English. There is one place in the Bible where Moses defines God. Mo God, there's a burning bush and mm -hmm. a voice says God and Moses says, who's God? Imagine defining God in five words. <laughs> I am that I am. I continue. I am continuum. Instead of saying I am powerful, I am empty, I am this, I am that I am. And very important is the Gospel of St. John. It begins with the line, in the beginning was the word, and the mm -hmm. word was with God. As in Hinduism, in the beginning was Om. Every word is sacrosanct. We must use our words like we use our money. We don't throw it into a drain. So that is what I'm trying to say. So sometimes we have writers who write and rewrite and edit their works. And I have done one thing over the years. I've been reading these short stories. I've been understanding them. I have seen the way they write and the, the influence that they have on us. I'll give you that story which I've collected, uh, The Gift of the Magi. I'm sure you've right. heard the story. Yes, I've read uh, it. About, you know, uh, yeah, the couple, one giving this yeah. and one. Finally, they don't get their gifts. So uh, what I did, I gave commentaries. Not about the story, because the story has to be read by the reader. So in this one, I just gave one line. And that line was said by none other than Mother Teresa, who was known for biblical English. When she got the Nehru Peace Award, she gave two sentences. And I thought it is most appropriate for the gift of the Magi. Love is built on sacrifice. Full stop. Give it till it hurts. It's a beautiful line. You must love somebody till it hurts. As you know, a lot of people think love is an adjective. No, love is a verb. What you do for something is love, beautifully put. So one line sums up the whole story. That's how I you know, did it. And when I picked up the stories, I took different genres. I took up different themes. But I found one thing common in them. And that was the great narrative skill of the writer. Right. And yet, uh, Terry, it's absolutely wonderful. And, you know, when you again, when you mentioned how there are certain sentences which could sum up stories, right? I couldn't help but just think about the Kaitano. Because uh, for you, a thousand times over is perhaps one of the most prolific lines I've read in my life, to, which sums up the entire plot line of the novel that's being narrated. But again, I will jump back to my Which question. novel? Which novel? Uh, the Kite Runner by Khalid Husseini. It's okay. Uh, uh, so my question to you, Terry, was: uh, I mean, you made some really interesting points about which largely revolved around brevity of w the word. But then, see, I'll tell you, writing as A B C. Remember, Siddharth, Siddharth, when yes. you your first alphabets are A B C. Correct. Yes. yes. And when you write, it has to be A, B, C. Accuracy, brevity, clarity. You understand? It right. has to be A, B, C. I mean, just don't think you got a pen so you can write anything. And remember what peace be upon him, Prophet Muhammad said. A drop of ink is more sacred than the blood of a martyr. Just imagine a drop of ink. All revolutions have taken place because of the pen, not because of the sword. So you see, what I'm trying to say is when you read something, whether it's a short story or a novel or anything, you have to carry it forward. You see, literature is the mirror of life. It's very good to impress, but it's very difficult to express. That's what I mean to say. Right. So, uh, tell you my have question we, was... Have we crossed the time? Have we crossed the time? Uh, no, we have we have some more time, Terry. Uh, uh, sure. So my question was actually about, uh, very interestingly, there are a lot of pieces of literature which are 
uh, for a lack of word, gagantum. To the extent, like if I would mention a suitable boy by Vikram Seth, right? It's some fifteen hundred odd pages, and that actually was, you know, right now while we were having this contradiction, I was just going over in my head about uh, books like that, which have been absolutely wonderful to read, but right now during this conversation, just kind of make me rethink about whether they could have been done better. So I would like actually like to know your opinion on things like this, you know, something like a Shantaram or. Uh, a uh, a suitable boy or war and peace books which are acknowledged as well written let, let, let's not insult people by comparing people each one has you see how who becomes a writer one who is a voracious reader if you don't you have to look at you know classics are very important a classic cannot be rewritten it is reread So when you read classics, you read voraciously. Then you develop a style of your own. So you have to develop a style. Now coming to the pages, you know there was a masterpiece written by Ernest Hemingway, and it was called "The Old Man and the Sea." You heard of it, "The Old Man and the Sea"? Yes. Yeah. Can you believe this novel had only ninety six pages? Yeah, and I'll tell you very interestingly when these bulky novels came out in the sixties. Interestingly, in the U.S., they brought out a book called the Nothing Book. I was pretty surprised. In the American Review, I read about it. It was called the Nothing Book. I said, "What is the Nothing Book?" It was a book hardbound called the Nothing Book. With ninety-six blank pages, oh, and okay. in the blurb, Norman, Norman Mailer, imagine who's writing. He said, "These don't write. This is not a diary. This is a book. Let it be pristine. Don't murder the pages, please." <laughs> and he left it like that. And somebody who was a critic said, "Why not we have a uh, those days? You know." Uh, The R P record. Why not we have a record which is absolutely silent, blank? So what happens? We are in a world where we are we are surrounded by so-called lines. Every billboard you see, there's a line, isn't it? And yes. so we are surrounded. So it's not the number of pages that matter. It is what quality you've given, and you know people drop names. You know, I have read a suitable boy. I have read this, that. You ask them, okay, what is the subtitle? What is the epigraph? Ah, uh, I don't know. What was the color of the cover? I don't remember. Remember the cover. Forget about other things. So, what happens? A book is great only when it leaves you with thoughts. It leaves you an impact. And literature, you use it in life. You don't put it on. In a shelf for pros, uh, post uh, for chalk dust posterity, that it will be taught in a university. No, 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 no. It has to. It has to be something that somebody cherishes and talks about. This is what I'm saying. So each author, each writer, each novelist has his own parameters. So to compare somebody 150, uh, 1500 pages, one 96 pages. it does not it, it will not be fair either to uh, ernest hemingway the great ernest hemingway and ernest hemingway i i don't know if you remember uh, no when he died he wrote his own epitaph pardon me for i cannot stand so things like that so even epitaphs are classy mm-hmm. i'll tell you the epitaph which is written in hiroshima nagasaki after the atomic explosion you'll be surprised the lines written there sleep in peace full stop the mistake will not be repeated beautiful lines and i think we require it today the pandemic is here because of that and global warming is staring us in our face because of that it's time we don't repeat those mistakes and writing i'll tell you siddharth i'm so happy that you brought in this whole conversation on writing and my collection of books now best 
somebody may say what is best it's a relative term absolutely but in my opinion i thought actually i wanted to do 50 stories but my editor with he was very sharp and intelligent yeah let's keep it at 41 she likes perhaps the number 41 so i said okay we'll keep it at 41 and then i kept scratching my what to drop each one is a gem <laughs> to drop so anyway i dropped the eight and i told her god sake don't tell me again to do 50 and make it 41 but she was very <laughs> and uh, i thank her uh, and i thank shweta from uh, westland to have got me connected with you people and as i said i would like to wish your kitabi karma to go on because that's the best gift you can give to the world you know we buy ice creams for our children some of us don't buy books as we say a poor a rich man has a small television and a big library a poor man has a huge television and a small library so you have to collect you have to read you have to reread you have to sort of remember as i said the three rules read record recall if you read something and you can't cite something then you haven't read it has not registered you see i do not know if you remember what the great uh, gulzar sahab wrote about you know how books have got redundant getting redundant which i don't believe and he said everything is at the click of a computer but in the end he says a beautiful thing if books are abandoned then how would you put love letters in a book which will drop and the girlfriend will pick it up so right. right in a lighter way and i wish i could speak to you in hindi i can quote the whole lines because please you see do, please do terry there's no no literature, literature has no language it's beautiful literature has no language hai na kitab kitabe jo aajkal band almari ke sheeshe se jhaankte hain kabhi mere god mein rakh ke main padhta tha ab to ilm to milte hi jayega ek click computer mein chhapki se chale jate hain line and then he says ilm to bhi ilm chalega knowledge will go on then he says lekin kitabon mein जो फूल और चिट्ठिया लिख के बहाने से गिरा कर उठाते थे और रिश्ते बनते थे उसका क्या होगा ब्यूटीफुल ब्यूटीफुल आई मीन लिटरेचर हैज टू बी इन योर ब्लड लिटरेचर डज नॉट मीन दिस लिटरेचर एनी लिटरेचर एनी बुक यू सी यू नो वॉट गिव से किताबी कारवे मीन यू नो ऑल गालिब से बहुत शोर सुनते थे पहलू में दिल का चीरा तो एक कथरा खू भी ना निकला एंड द सेम जॉन की फिलोसफी आर नो एक्सियम्स अनलेस इट इज फेल्ट अपॉन द पल्स सो अ राइटर हैज टू पार्ट द सेरेब्रल कॉटेक्स द ब्रेन एंड द सोलर प्लेक्सेस द हार्ट देर आर राइटर्स हु थिंक देर फीलिंग्स एंड द राइटर्स हु फील देर थॉट्स so it's a beautiful world it's a beautiful world of creativity and as creativity means finding alternates in given situation so every writer has his own style his own methodology and yet the goal is to reach the reader and make him think as descartes said i think therefore i am and siddhar i want to end with this Yeah. the novel siddharth i don't know if you read uh, heard of it the novel oh. siddharth herman by s uh, herman s yes it was made into a film so when siddharth goes he sent by the courtesan he wants some job then he goes to this businessman lecherous businessman and he asks him are you are uh, what can you do and siddharth replies i can do three things and he says what can you do and he says i can read i can write i can think very simply put that is creativity that is literature that is writing that is editing so the joys of reading go beyond everything 
thank you terry terry just before you uh, we end this conversation uh, in fact one of the uh, great things that we can do on this app is where people can join into this conversation and we had anu who wanted to ask you a question so uh, sure. anu you can unmute yourself and ask a question and if anyone else wants to chime in you could drop in your comments through the chat box or raise your hands so that we can add you to the speaker list and you can talk yeah hey sir thank you can you hear me yeah you're audible awesome hey terry nice to hear you um great conversation for a saturday morning here in new jersey um i just wanted to make a comment um and then also share a short story that my daughter's written um i think for me personally the format of the stories um i mean each format has its own purpose and each even the novel and each story has its own purpose and i know that you know when you read a story for me what survives um the test of time is a story that impacts your life um and one of the greatest stories that i think changed my life is animal farm it's a simple story um and that's what literature is for me it changed the way i looked at the world and if if a story can do that for you um and that's that's to me is literature um <laughs> my daughter who's 7 years old wrote a very short story i call it little bites if you indulge me can i have her read that story out to you terry yeah before you tell me that okay i have a grandson who's 7 years old hello yeah so i can hear yeah. you and you know nowadays what he does he says granddad is a writer so am i <laughs> and he's very good on the laptop he has written 42 stories oh, wow little, little stories. and i tell you when i want to edit it is a sorry i will edit my own stories if you want get somebody to design the cover he does not allow anybody and he says granddad one day i will also be a writer and i laugh and smile but i like the way he does it imagine little chap with his uh, you know computer skills writing little stories nothing to do with what is heard nothing so i am very glad that your daughter has started early and uh, let's hear her out Yeah no thank you that's inspiring she's hearing you so now this is a small story it's it's kind of funny but uh, because you shared the story about the little ghost i thought it would be a good thing to share so are you going to read the story first say hi and introduce yourself hi my name is anya my seven anya. years what, what's the meaning of anya uh i think it's grace and blessing yeah you must know the meaning of your name my girl <laughs> you must know. yeah yeah tell me okay. So introduce the title of the story and then read it. Okay. The title is The Sandwich. Okay. Okay. Read it out loud. Once upon a time there was a slice of bread going on a walk in sandwichhood. Then she met a jam along the way. And then they bumped into another bread slice. And then they started to walk all around sandwichhood. And then they reached jam's home and played a game called sandwich. It's a card game. That's it. The end. And they were best friends forever. Very good, Anya. Very good. Thank you. That's a cute party. story. No, no. I'm. See, don't give adjectives. Good, good, best. Don't give those adjectives. I, I'm giving my appreciation to Anya, authentically on the way she wrote. I'll tell you one. The most powerful way. of beginning a story is what she did once upon a time the child is asking you for the willing suspension of disbelief i'm looking at it as a critic so when the moment you say once upon a time the baby turns around and has all her ears to the story and anya has realized that i'm talking to her without being conscious she's begun it beautifully once upon a time you know children do not believe in fairies and ghosts they live with fairies when they were born they lived in fact i have a book 50 greatest classic stories for children where i have redone all this little stories like you know jack and the beanstalk and things like that so i've redone so children are beautiful they are the best they are the most creative and as a mother i'll tell you be proud and encourage her and make her write not only about ghosts but write about fairies write of butterflies there's so many things to write about 
And I'm sure one day we'll see her name written in golden letters somewhere. God bless you, Anya. Thank you so much, Sherry. And the words of encouragement. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I like her smiling and laughing. Yeah, yeah. Good. <laughs> Well, Terry, that brings us to the end of our conversation. And thank you so much for doing this with us today. Uh, I don't think there are any more questions, Terry. But this was absolutely wonderful. Uh, I genuinely enjoyed talking, talking to you. To you. And, and it, in fact... And it in fact uh, uh, is my voice echoing? Is my voice echoing? No, no. Your voice is nice and thundering. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Now, listen to well, me. Well, yes. Before we part, I would like to tell you... Because I'm all... I've compiled a book of poems uh, called Lend Me a Years from Penguin yes. for elocution yes. and things like that. But whenever I part from someone, I like to, you know, cite these two lines. Meet we shall, Siddharth. Meet we shall and part to meet again as the dead meet on the lips of living men. <laughs> Let's hope the great writers still live on our lips, including our little Anya's story, once upon a time. God bless all of you. Thank you. Take good care. Thank you, Terry. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you so, much. so much. Okay, bye.